All right, so we have uh, the North America StarCraft Masters. This is a 16-man invite tournament. It started off with a group phase that Saiyan uh, casted, and you can check that out. I have a link in the description as well as you can use the command if you're in the chat, N-A-S-M, and that'll link you to that. Uh, the round of eight has concluded. We have our top four. Our first match is going to be Gypsy versus Hawk, uh, and that's going to be... Uh, coming up here in just one moment. And then we're going to have Boa versus Striker. Uh, so two very good matchups. Definitely four of the very best uh, North American players, without a doubt. Should be really good. And I'm just checking on something real quick, and we'll get this started. All right, so it is a best of five. And uh, yeah, let's go. All right, in the bottom right, or top right. Oh my God, the blue right is killing me. Okay, there we go. That's, there you go, there you go. In the top right of Radeon, we have Hawk. In the bottom right, we have Gypsy. All right, so who are these guys? Well, you guys should know by now, but if you don't, uh, Gypsy, the number one, uh, you know, Terran outside of Asia, I guess you could say. Probably me who would be ranked higher, but he's actually mechanically better. Uh, a very, very strong Terran player. And one of the favorites in this tournament, of course. And then we have Hawk up here. He's a Stormgate player that decided to dabble a little bit into uh, Brood War. Uh, really, though, he is, he is one of the strongest uh, North American players. He has been for a very long time. Definitely has his own style, kind of greedy. Uh, and he has been playing a lot of Stormgate lately, which is why I kind of joke about that. Became one of the highest ranked players during that beta phase. Uh, and looks like he's going to open with a nine pool here, looking to maybe catch, uh, some, some cheesiness from Gypsy, like whether an eight racks or a, a, a BBS or something like that, he could get a free kill, but uh, I don't think that's something we're going to end up seeing. Uh, one thing I want to mention is, yeah, Hawk is not in quite the shape that Gypsy is. Gypsy's been playing a lot lately. Uh, Hawk, I think he's playing again now more consistently, but he did he did take a long uh, amount of time where he was playing heavily on on Stormgate. So yeah, maybe not 100% his top self, but I don't want to make excuses for him here. Uh, also, yeah, it, this like against Gypsy, right? Like I'm I'm trying to think. I Jayun actually put it very well. Uh, when he was like writing up some summaries of NAPL, like for players like that Hawk is better than, it's very hard for them to beat Hawk. Like he's very good at just holding the line against a player that's weaker. You almost never see him fall to anyone weaker, but he just barely falls short a lot of the time against players that are stronger, right? We've seen that countless times in like BSL tournaments where he's played DeWalt or Bonneth, where it's like just barely, barely loses to them. Uh, and just doesn't get that upset. Uh, same happened in the Corrupted Cup several years ago. Uh, and I would I would rank Gypsy as a bit better than Hawk. So I think this is going to be an uphill battle for our Zerg player. But we'll see what he's able to do. Sending Zerglings across the map with that nine pool. Gypsy pulls five SCVs. Okay. Uh, normally you pull four here, but it's a wide ramp. Space tile set has wider ramps overall. So... I get it, kind of makes sense here. We'll see what type of micro he does if he tries repair micro or just pull back micro. He's already got two Marines, so he's gonna be completely fine. Uh, n like if nine pull comes straight down and you don't like mineral boost your SCVs, you generally have one uh, Marine when the nine pool hits. So this is really not gonna work. And he'll pull back SCVs. Yeah, it like three is even a lot right now. Builds a command center on high ground, should add another depot and uh, I mean, from there, it's really up to him. Does he want to, you know, go into a barracks or go into gas? I think gas here is going to be a little bit better. Uh, you see, he is scouting. He actually sees the timing of this gas. And as he pops up here, he'll see that the layer has started, which is like very important info. Now, where there is the uh, third depot. So going to continue that production up. And I like, I really do want to see if he wants to go like one racks a CAD, two racks a CAD. You know, I guess you could go towards plus one, but I don't think plus one is any good here. Like you're not gonna get enough uh, intel to be able to do that. So he goes for the second barracks. So this is gonna be a more marine heavy, probably pressureful build. And he'll go for the gas in the academy coming up next. 
So Hawk over here, he's got four more lings plus these six, right? So his economy is not good. He's on 12 workers. He's getting Zergling speed. And I think that Gypsy's pretty much on top of this with this SCV. So the Ling's rallying out still. It, I feel like right now what he's waiting is for Gypsy to try to do any sort of pressure. But I think that he's read this correctly, right? If he just sits back very defensively, Hawk has already... Mm, what's, the, what's the saying that I'm looking for here? He's already thrown his own noose on or something like that i don't know oh my god i know that's not the saying but basically he's had very low drones this entire time so his economy isn't very good he hasn't really done damage a little bit of lost mining time but that's it the zergling's trying to come in and look he's gonna try for the flank there you can see really trying to get a good tactic off and this is smart play like this is good stuff this will win you a lot of games but it feels like gypsy is just completely solid completely on top of this right now so hawk has to back up dug his own grave thank you guy in the chat thank you dug he dug his own grave uh by skipping so many drones now it's not it's not 100 percent over he hasn't wasted these lings the thing is they don't scale that well like the more units gypsy gets the weaker these become they'll still be somewhat useful for but for how early he made them they had to be more useful than this or it's a net loss so definitely right now it's a net loss uh academy is up he's making that comm sat and gonna want to get that scan down and yeah, Hawk on a low economy, just 19 drones at the moment. Two barracks only for Gypsy. He's got that uh, eBay almost done. Throws his scan down. Oh, he actually scans the natural. So when you scan the natural, like that scan actually, that lasted. So that was fine. When you see these three pop at the same time into eggs, you know that this is Muta's. Also, he was checking the drone count. If there was like one drone here, he'd know there's even more lings on the map than this. So very good, very high quality scan. Of course, there is a very rare situation where maybe he'd try to do something tricky or hawk, you know, hoping to just get scanned once, but it's it's not likely, so we won't even really bother talking about that too much. A couple fire bats going up the side. That's kind of interesting because the mutas might end up catching them. He's trying to be sneaky with them. If he can sneak them into the natural, he can just win. Hawk is going to find those immediately, and Gypsy will try to stim them forward there. They're going to get taken out. And look, oh man, he already made two creep colonies as well. So his drone count going down even more at the moment. Everything looking pretty good back at the Terran base. Probably start a factory at this point, I would imagine. He has plenty of missile turrets. I think he should just throw down a, a, a bunker. Uh, you know, it, this, like, what can you lose to is kind of what you're looking at. Like, is there something Hawk can do right now? Because Hawk is so far on the back foot. You can see he's his worker count is doubled right now. It's two base against two base. His production isn't that good. So it's like, yeah, maybe these dives in, right? If he can get the turrets, maybe he comes in with the mutas. He can maybe abuse this area. That's why you kind of want something like a bunker in a situation like this. Third barracks going up. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. This is something uh, Sharp showed us during the wild card uh, qualifiers for for ASL this season. I really like this against a very aggressive uh, two hatch muta because a lot of times the wow that's a good repair by the way. I was just ignoring it because I thought it was going to die and Hawk did too, but he ends up losing multiple mutas. So an excellent excellent repair. But what I was going to say is uh, historically we haven't seen uh, the barracks added after the turrets. Normally you go factory then add barracks, uh, but against this more aggressive kind it actually works really well to add that third barracks i've really enjoyed that play recently i think it's very good now the bio coming up forcing hawk into more sunkens and you can see the tough situation that he's in here right he's got good saturation here but like we're down to one drone mining the natural so it's all down to mutilus micro now and gypsy's just been so on top of repairing look at that repair man that's flash level repair you would be so surprised how hard it is to calmly, coolly, and collectively get five SCVs to repair a turret right away. I challenge you to go watch 20 Pro Gamer TVZs and see how many of them get that done in 20 games. It'll be like maybe one. I'm not even kidding. So really, really good repair there. Excellent SCV controls always out of Gypsy. The Muta's just not doing it for Hawk at the moment. He sees that the factory is done. The SCV count is still very, very high. There's four barracks, plus one is done. He's still harassing the main, so at least there's that. 
not a lot left going on here though unfortunately gonna pull back and yeah things have not gotten better just more mutilisks hatching so he's gotta like if he wants to win he has to eventually cut through the marines and the turrets <laughs> like i guess the most likely way to win at this point is you somehow kill the marines and you get the turrets. I, it looks like he's diving more towards the SCVs, so I think he wants to just abuse this general area and maybe cut him down to one base mining. That's a that's a decent way to go about it. Uh, if you get them down to one base mining, they won't be able to afford as many turrets and marines. But now he's getting trapped in here. Lots of missile turrets, lots of marines. Good micro from Hawk considering, but we, we might actually see GG out of him pretty soon. Like he's done damage, sure. But his economy is so weak. Like. He's, he's barely able to produce these mutas at the moment. So dives on this uh, turret. Okay, gets another one, but loses a muta. You can't be traded a muta for a turret, obviously. Coming back in. The Thorax just outproducing what Hawk can make right now. Continuing some pretty strong rotations. I'm surprised there's not a bunker yet. Like, really and truly, I think a bunker here is so unbelievably worth it. Mutas come in and actually get a very good engage against some Marines that don't have medics near them. In the meantime, the Lings kill off a turret. Definitely a lot of value being had with some of these smaller attacks from Hawk, but... Yeah, is he going to be able to actually break through? Uh, Valkyrie is on the way. Uh, of course, when the Valk pops out, that's going to be... Uh, Maybe the nail in the grave that Hawk has dug for himself with the low drone count. Um, yeah, it, 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 the mutas not exactly stuck. Dude, <laughs> if they play a similar game, I guarantee you Gypsy will make a bunker. Like, this is this is getting really silly how many turrets he's lost, like two to four lings. Uh, but yeah, pulls back, comes back in. And yeah, the Valkyrie coming out. GG. And that's going to be uh, game number one going to Gypsy there. So pretty strong play. I I mean, it was a nine pool from Hawk and then he made some extra links. He got the link speed. It looked like he wanted Gypsy to move out. He tried some tactics to, to make that work uh, and was was unable to do so. So we're going to go ahead and jump into game number two. We're going to be going to Neo Dark Origin. <laughs> the straw that broke the nail in the grave. <laughs> Man. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, do you guys ever have this happen? Um... I do this all the time. Okay, there it is. Alt W. I forgot what key. I was like thinking too deliberately. Normally when I observe games, I know how to move the overlay around. But now I'm like, oh my God, I'm doing this live in front of the guys in the chat. And then I suddenly forgot what button it was to do that, which was super, super weird because I do it literally every day. <laughs> and it's like automatic. Oh man. Anyways, we're on Neo Dark Origin. Gypsy in the bottom right, leading one to zero. We have Hawk in the top left. And Neo Dark Origin, uh, you know, a similar game to what we saw previously might work a little bit better. Like if you're going to go really heavy mutilist harassment, because Neo Dark Origin is one of the hardest maps to block mutilisks on. You have to build a truly absurd amount of missile turrets. Uh, it's really, really hard in some areas. You actually have to like kind of interrupt your own mining with it as well. The top position is frankly harder to build turrets. Like especially the natural, uh, but the you know the bottom is pretty hard too. So we'll see we'll see how that plays out. Uh, now Gypsy actually makes the barracks in the main base and the depot in the main base, which is fine. You can absolutely do this. Uh, although this does have a zergling tight wall and it does have a one hole wall that you can do. So there's like a lot of options for walling in where you can skip bunkers. So I I personally think that that's a very good way to play. But if your opponent decides to pull out something like a four pool then you're going to lose to that most likely so gypsy playing like an ultimate safe build like is something like a four pool comes against this he'll win 90 percent of the time i would say 
It would just come down to like some sort of terrible misclick to lose that. So maybe just playing a little bit safe, feeling like he has that advantage. Moves up with his scout, natural on the way. Very normal looking build here from Hawk. So while we kind of wait for this uh, game to pick up a little bit, thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, I do want to mention that this was sponsored by Mooney. Uh, M-U-N-I. He's a good Terran player from NA that kind of became uh, active again very recently and wanted to throw a tournament for, you know, all the fans to watch and the top North American players to play. So a big shout out to Mooney. Give him some love if you see him around. Uh, and of course, to Saiyan as well, who casted the round of 16 in this. Um, it, that, that was great of him. I think he's a great caster. So you can check him out as well on his YouTube. It's Saiyan KCM. So yeah. Uh, okay, let's let's look at this game because it is starting to pick up a little bit. We have the layer starting. That was a 252 layer. So this is a very aggressive build, right? This is a build where you might not see the third hatch or maybe you see a third hatch at a third base for Hawk. He gets the layer super quick. You're going to have the mutas out a little bit quicker as well. Looking over at Gypsy's side of the map, uh, making the second barracks and getting into... Uh, the refinery, of course, the academy will go down down here. And yeah, nice, very fast command center. This must have been 15 CC. I wasn't even looking at it, but um, I think that's probably what just happened there. So nice, fast expand. Is going to need a bunker this game, I would say, because he's going to end up losing this SCV or not getting as much scouting as he wants with it, very, very likely. And yeah, there is that drone, right? So you might look at this and be like, okay, how does the gas timing influence like how can i look at that and say okay he's probably taking a third base on location so it basically just has to do with like when you're taking your gas when you're making your drones right so like if you hold off a little bit and you make your layer about 10 seconds later you have a more solid economy and you just kind of throw the hatch in the main and you're fine this is a more aggressive style most people get zergling speed with this if he does not then it can be very bad. Like, this is a two racks academy opener. So if Hawk does not get Zergling speed, which it doesn't look like he's going to do, Gypsy has the opportunity to walk out and kill this base. And if you walk out and kill this base, the only chance for Zerg at that point at a high level is a big counterattack on the turrets. So we're going to see... Uh, he's not getting the Zergling speed, right? So this is super, super, super greedy from Hawk and he loses the Overlord. Oh my God. Oh man. 25 of 18. This might be a quick game. Oof. Big, big oof here. Okay, eBay coming up. Has a couple of fire bats because he knows that Speedlings uh, definitely could be out. Moving across the map now. Looking over at Hawk's base. We have that Spire almost done. The third hatch is done. He's going to poke in here, but two sunks are up, so you can't really hit it. Now, if he turns around and goes up here, it's like huge move, a huge move. And I'm actually a, just not hugely surprised he's not going up there, but a little bit surprised, I would say, because his SCV was in the main base when the layer started. So if you pay like really close attention to the exact start time and it's 252, you have to look at that and say, okay, well, very reasonable chance there's a third base on the map somewhere. And he does start sending some units around. We see a fireback going here. We see a fireback going up here. But the timing to kill that base has now left because the mutalisks are going to be out. Missile turrets are on the way. Third barracks coming up. Range almost done here. Excellent, excellent turret positioning. This is something everyone started to do now, this turret in the middle. It slows mining a little bit, but it really helps against the mutas. If you just try to do a pod of turrets here, like the turrets down here suck. It's like one here. You can put one here and like kind of here or here which is way far out uh, up here is fine but yeah this one really supports the bottom and the top so it's very very good placement i love to see it uh we'll see what the factory timing is going to look like there it is 626 very good moving out trying to catch these mutas as they fly in now you know it, it was a rough start in some ways for a hawk right losing the overlord he had to make two sunks but he did skip the, uh, you know, the, the Zergling speed. He's got his mutas out. Uh, it's not the end of the world. He actually has a good worker count. Look at that, 27. Way higher than he got last game, and this is way earlier into the game. 
Now, because he has a third base, he can get that gas relatively quickly and go for those heavy mutas that we were talking about before. Now, I think Gypsy is very likely here to try to get into Valkyries. So we'll we'll check on that as he throws down his starport or starports if he goes into Valkyries. But this definitely looks like that type of situation where your opponent is going to go heavy uh, Mutalisk very likely. In fact, we have plus one on the way here for Hawk. Plenty of mutas being made. Yeah, this is a this is good play by Hawk. You know, like that early game, there were opportunities where Gypsy may have been able to even come very close to winning the game. You know, Hawk didn't, wouldn't necessarily have to leave, but Gypsy could have gotten a big lead by maybe intuiting that this is there. You can't expect someone to do that every time, so that's fine. Uh, but now Hawk has like a huge amount of mutas. He's making a bunch of links. Dude, this is pretty decent. Now, Gypsy is going to move up here. The Mutas are not that far off. So they're going to fly up. He's going to be able to eliminate this. Uh, Gypsy's making him do it with the Mutas. He was actually just hatching a ton of Zerglings to help clear this more efficiently. So in a way, this was a decent move. He ends up killing four Mutas there overall, uh, but does lose that forward, uh, that forward set of units. Now, there's the Armory. The Armory actually started late. I think he wasn't reading the situation a hundred percent as to what the unit production was going to look like uh so yeah that's that's a big move out there from hawk uh the add-ons are going to finish before that armory's done so he's going to lose a little bit of production time unfortunate but not the end of the world necessarily plenty of marines no bunker hmm and hawk you know hawk has the three gas now i'm interested if hawk goes super heavy all in with the mutiling or if he's going to try anything else like is he going to just go into lurkers i feel like if he threw down a hydralis den here it would give him a little bit more flexibility since the factory is floating and that's a normal play but we'll see what he does the ling's kind of ready decent spread here as far as scouting goes although there's nothing really to see coming out of the base i think he's got a good eyes on exactly what the the possibilities coming out of gypsy are right now so two Volks are on the way. The Hydro's Den is being made. That's very, very important. The Muta's not really diving in. Like, he's being very timid with these Mutalisks. And he's got a lot of Mutalisks, man. And plus one attack. So he's got, like, almost two groups. So he's got 11 and then 9. So that makes 20. Oh, my God. 20 Mutalisks. And let's see what he does. Okay, he dives in at the natural. Loses one. Flies out. The Volks are out. Now, you should probably go Vessel. Oh, yeah, Gypsy knows. He's he's on top of things. Uh, so he has two to help push back these Mutas, which did not get Carapace, but instead got Attack. The Mutas have not done what they were supposed to. But here come the Lings, and he's going to come in with the Mutas as well, targeting down these Marines. But, oh, my God, the Valkyrie's so, so strong here. You can see the amount of damage dealt to those Mutas. Uh, the Volks are going to be taken out, it looks like. Oh, God, one actually ends up living. But yeah, that was that was maybe even more than 20 mutas. I didn't see if he had rallied a few more down, uh, but loses a lot of them. Does end up killing the majority of that army. And now we have a radiate and vessels coming. Uh, you know, the lurker upgrade is coming as well as 12 hydras. Now, if obviously this, you know, Hawk had a certain idea in his head for this game, uh, but you know, right now it's very like on meta to do this heavy mutilus harassment but get your lurkers slightly quicker so that you can get a contain up in the choke and if you get that right now it's like dude every zerg in the whole world is winning a lot of games with that at the moment uh, against people that are going for the the double starport stuff so uh unfortunately he won't be able to get there in time he is morphing some lurkers on the map as you can see looks like he is going to lose this volk unfortunately the mutas just fly up and get a pick while it was going after the overlords such a common thing to lose your Volk while it finds uh, overlords. Gypsy's trying to move across the ramp. Getting that plus one armor. He does already have the plus one attack. Excellent irradiate. Holy crap. Dude, that was the sickest irradiate. He has three muta kills. going to be four muta kills with that and a ton of damage to them. You can see how low those mutas are now. So now it's just mass lurker from Hawk. Let's see what he's able to do. Brings in some lings as well. Gypsy spreading. Nice stim. It's a very excellent spread. Hawk tries to go around everything, but he actually does it a little bit too much. And Gypsy takes a good trade here. Yeah, overall, that was good for Gypsy. He killed a lot of those lurkers. That is unfortunate for Hawk. 
Hawk still has a decent economy, but you can see his drone count hasn't grown forever. GG is called, and that's going to be 2-0 to zero for Gypsy so far. I think Hawk definitely had a better chance that game, uh, but unable to, to kind of make it come to fruition. Um, yeah, yeah, it... He was super timid with the mutas, which I get because Gypsy had really good coverage with the turrets. Uh, he had his marines kind of sitting inside the turrets. It's really hard to attack into that. He had a very compact, really strong base structure. So uh, it was kind of avoided there by Hawk. And unfortunately, you know, that allowed the Volks to get out without any damage being done. It allowed Gypsy to trade pretty well. He went into two vessels afterwards. And then that very last move of the Lurkers was... Uh, he kind of like went too far like he was trying to make sure he could kill the army but he went like around the entire army so much that the marines were already kind of pre-spread and the lurker spines went everywhere instead of like adding all their splash together so yeah uh gypsy had basically the best engagements you could have there or in that particular moment at least All right, guys, we are going to uh, get into game number three now. Let's do it. This is a best of five. So Gypsy now on match point. We're going to Citadel for map number three. Gypsy in the top right. Hawk in the bottom right. Uh, Hawk definitely doing uh, slightly more aggro, slightly more mutilisk heavy builds, which is totally fine. I know he does have some builds up his sleeve that are more lurker centric but they actually aren't that good i think those are some of his weakest plays like his his lurker opening sometimes he mixes them into a best of five but i don't know that now is the time for that well we'll wait a moment and uh see what the openers are going to end up being i wonder if gypsy has some some plan to uh Maybe mix it up a little bit. I bet you he goes plus one this game. We'll see, though. We'll see. Uh, it doesn't have any sort of wall. Plus one is generally better with a wall, I guess. But it, he's a big fan of quick plus one attack in this matchup. Plays it really, really well. But maybe against Hawk uh, here, he wants to play like a more compact and defensive game. You know, like a two racks academy rush. Or even if you don't rush the academy, even if the academy is like maybe... You know, instead of being closer to four minutes and 30 seconds, if it's closer to five minutes uh, or, you know, right around there, it's it's really sturdy. It can hold everything that Zerg does. Like, there's no there's no full counter to it. Like, there's stuff that's better against it and stuff that's worse against it, but it's just it gives you the flexibility to kind of play a macro game no matter what. So it wouldn't be too surprising to see that, especially considering he's up 2-0. He may want to just try to grind Hawk out as opposed to get uh, fancy in some way. You know, it, I think that that's... Uh, it's always an interesting thing to uh, how you decide to play something like a best of five, a best of three, a best of seven, whatever it may be. Because you can do things like if you're up two games... I mean, I feel like I can make cases for a lot of different ways to play. Like you could do three double barracks in the center. Odds are you're going to get one, right? <laughs> uh, you know, you could you could play cheesy. You could play fancy. You could play solid. You could be like, yeah, if I just play solid, I'm already up 2-0. I'm a little bit better. I'm just going to play solid three games in a row here and pick up a win. You know, it, it's something that kind of fascinates me uh, about, about StarCraft. Because StarCraft, you know, some people like to uh, compare it to chess. But I think the closer comparison in a lot of ways is poker where it's like yeah there's certain risks you can take that give you like a lot of power right like if you make two barracks in the center he could have done that and the game would be over you know like very likely so i it, it, i'm not saying that it's a mistake to to not do that i'm just it's the early game <laughs> and i'm just trying to find things to talk about so but yeah that's it's just something i think about a lot anyways uh rallying out some marines right now Citadel is a map that only has little strips of high ground. On top of each of these ramps, there's a little strip of high ground. Uh, so it, it's a little bit thicker than that. It, I think it's actually like that. But anyways, um, you know, it, it's it's a really interesting map because of that. It's, it, so it's a flat map with just some ramps that, 
that kind of they do they obscure vision more than anything else that's basically what they're doing there but you can utilize them as that high ground as well now gypsy microing around sees that layer and he's going to pressure this is a very good move uh if your opponent is not making extra lings now he's actually making two here and he kills the scv and these two will come out so he should be able to hold this pretty well it's very annoying so oh he's gonna lose a drone and going behind the minerals is about the best you can do here. You should actually put them all the way back there, but eh. What are you going to do? Very, very popular move, right? If the Overlord is not in a good position, right? Like, for instance, here, Hawk scouted to the left first. So he didn't have an Overlord that could really watch for something like that. And if they don't send a Ling up... The thing is, if they do send a Ling up, that's what those three Marines are standing there for, is to catch the Ling. So you watch with your SCV, and if they're only making drones, sometimes you can send the Marines across the map. And if they don't see a Ling or anything on the way, then you catch them off guard and you can do drone damage sometimes. And it's huge. Because, like, if you do certain builds, like, look, this is a two barracks academy. Those first four Marines, you can lose them and there's no penalty. Like, there's no... Well, I mean, if they happen to be going speedlings and now it's suddenly, you know, it's mass speedling against six Marines. Yeah, maybe you're screwed then. But for the most part, it's like, yeah, you can sacrifice those and, and get some drones. And if you get, you know, one drone, two drones for some lings, it's generally going to be a worthwhile trade for you. So Gypsy right now, uh, I mean, uh, Hawk right now has the uh, bottom left base going up for him. Uh, a more like macro-esque opener, right? So this is his fourth hatchery overall. He made his third hatchery in his main base. So the more kind of this is more on meta right now uh a lot of people like to go for the two hatch with the third hatch in the main it's very very safe it's super easy to defend because you only have this one point of defense uh but very quickly gets this base now one thing about hawk if he gets his game going at all he likes to drone really heavily so he might go a little bit greedy here now that being said gypsy has gone for a two racks academy into four barracks play so he's been able to force the two Sunkens, right? He had those four Marines that came down and harassed as well. But he's going into the four racks. And once he has range, he'll be able to push a little bit heavier. The plus one is a little bit slow. This is not a plus one rush that you normally see with four racks. But plus one after Academy Rush is... Or uh, rather, four racks after Academy Rush without the plus one being done is also a pretty decent pressure build. And he'll be able to uh, kind of maintain pressure out there with this. So it's it's kind of, you know, one of these midway builds where it's like, yeah, you were safe with the Academy Rush, but you're also putting pressure on. But the plus one's not done, so you don't just rail through mutiling or anything like that. Okay, Gypsy walking down. I think he's just trying to catch some mutas right now. Mutas turn around. Mm, yeah, I think Hawk is fine at the moment. Like, you're not going to go after these sunks with the mutas right there, but he's keeping the mutas back, which is kind of nice. Zergling speed gets started, but that is a while out, so it's going to be hard to just swarm this. You're just going to have to make mutas and micro nicely. And he's going to be looking for the edges, right? He just picked off the marine on the side. That's the type of uh, engage you're looking for here with Zerg. You don't want to attack a flat row of marines because they all shoot at the same time. So notice how he flies around. As they fly around, you should reposition your Marines. See this one come out? He goes after it, right? That's the kind of sharking around that they're doing right here. Looking for an angle. He's like, oh, you're in flat in this way? Let's fly around this side, see if you're flat this way. Flies around, completely different angle. Looks for reinforcements as well. Okay, it stims up, he pulls back. In the meantime, Gypsy has sent four Marines here. This, uh, there's three, there's no drones. There's no drones. So this is, normally this is like a game breaking move. Like you'll get over here and you'll kill three, four drones and you'll feel great. Here, it's like, this is annoying, but he does not have to lose, right? He sends four mutas. He does not have to lose the hatchery and he's not going to lose drones. So at least that's something. So he sends those mutas over uh, and he will clear that. And you can see now, see the Marines not really in a line. Very good micro there from Hawk, taking really good engagement. Nice, picks off the medic. Starting to do a good job here. All right, going to pick off those medics as well. And now everything seems pretty safe overall. Uh, we have an armory coming up. Uh, 
pretty close to well timed there against the uh, construction towers. These take like 38 seconds. That's 50, so these will finish just before, I guess. Uh, he'll probably throw down a science facility as well. I think a lot of the times, unless they're really all in on the mutas, you generally just go for a couple Valkyries and go into uh, the, the science vessel so you can deal with the lurkers and whatnot afterwards. And hive tech, of course. But it could go either way there. Poor Gypsy. So yeah, just kind of waiting on that. Armory has some pretty good defense overall. Refuses to make bunkers, by the way. Kind of interesting to see. I just, I feel like at this point in the game, like a bunker is so useful. Like if a bunker's here, this is so much harder for the mutas to do. It's hard for lings to come in. It's just, it's a very, it's very good to have a bunker at some point. It's great. And here's the thing. It's great to skip the bunker early, but you know, once the mutas are actually out and there's actually a lot of play, I feel like the bunker becomes pretty strong until you gain map control and the mutas are kind of done. And then it's not really needed anymore. So he's trying to kind of skip that. You know, it's just some small optimizations by Gypsy. So the Volk's going to be out shortly here. Look at Hawk's drone count. This is what I was talking about before. If the game goes okay for him at all, he gets very, very greedy. Tons of drones being made. Tons of drones. He's up at 45 against 48. That's not... That's not super common to see at this point. It's And it's not necessarily wrong. It's actually pretty hard to play against because uh, if you go and start to get aggressive to try to punish all these drones and it doesn't work, he gets further ahead, right? And if you do punish somewhat, it's like, okay, well, he could lose a certain amount of drones and still be okay, right? So it's, it's definitely like a reasonable way that he plays. He doesn't feel it like it when you play against it, but yeah. It's like these mutas being chased down by the Volks super hard. Taking tons and tons of damage. Gypsy walking down with a lot of Marines and uh, Medics. The Lurker Morph is going to be... Oh, uh, you know, he's going to have to buy a little bit of time. Oh, you know what? The two Sunken's finish. I'm sorry. I thought that those were creep colonies coming up. So kind of a weird looking defense, but it works. So he saves this base. You know, he forces those. He forces some uh, defensive Lurkers. Those are probably going to come up anyways. And now Gypsy going to continue to rotate around a little bit. Pick off an Overlord, perhaps. Did, we did hear Scourge connect with one of the Volks. More Marines and Medics coming out. Vessels on the way. Five Racks production. Looks like the Mutas want to come up and pick off. <laughs> trying. He's trying to pick that off. The Mutas are super low right now. You do not want to lose all these as well. You actually want these to heal up a bit and use them as like anti-drop for for later on. Now let's take a look at what we're doing upgrade wise, right? So plus one carapace is on the way and there's an ultralist cavern as well as the defiler mound at the same time here. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, but for Gypsy, he's actually already got plus two on the way, right? So the fact that he's going plus two here, I don't like the three base ultra uh, defiler from from hawk to go ultra and defiler you need four gases that's why we talk so much about four gases being so critical against Terran, because you can do everything on three gases you're going to be light on something now here he's he's getting the ultras cavern but not necessarily we don't know when he'll make ultras okay so i'm not i don't want to be too critical about that but uh, you know, he's getting more upgrades, he's getting five defilers, a bunch of lurkers. So lurker ling defiler maybe for a bit to try to secure the fourth base and then maybe into uh, maybe into the ultras could be the play. Couple more macro hatches go down. So this is a lot of macro hatches. This style actually became popular in the last couple of years where you on three base Zerg throw down like a million hatches. I'm actually wondering with the amount of hatches he's making... I'm I'm kind of going over my head whether or not he's going to just try a massive push because there's a variant of this where you get hatches like this, but you actually go Hydra instead of the Ultralist Cavern and you just do an all-in push. And I know Hawk knows that build and he's very good at it, but here he is getting Kindness Plating. So he's definitely thinking about Ultras, but Ultras are a later game tool. So I'm not exactly sure what the plan is going to be, but it, I, I don't want to call it one way or another. Like what's what what he's gonna do I, I i honestly can't really tell right now so he might just push out really strong and take this he might just try to come out and do like a really big push 
I my gut is that he's going to expand again. I don't think he's going to try to all in with this because it can just be kited uh, pretty well. Now, Plague is on the way. Burrow as well. Right now, ship weapons for Gypsy, so that's really smart. But let's see. Does he have Carapace? He does not. Now, that doesn't mean ship weapons are bad, but it, basically, if you get ship weapons, uh, battle cruisers will one-shot Scourge no matter how many Carapace they have. But if Scourge have even one Carapace, battle cruisers two-shot them, right? So it's a good upgrade to get if you're going battle cruiser. It's just you may as well get it if you have uh, an armory for sure. So he is going into BCs, which and BCs are great in this type of situation. Now Gypsy comes in with double drop ship behind this base. Ooh, very good Dark Swarm right away. Splitting these Marines out a little bit, trying to go after that Nidus. The Nidus kill is always really, really good. Takes a while to remake that Nidus. And that may allow him. Now you have only the defense that's here until you get a new Nidus up. He starts a new Nidus, comes in. Look at this. He's going to irradiate all of the Defilers. Probably the Lurkers as well. Oh, God. Oh, a very good plague goes down, but does get a couple of his own buildings. Not that that really matters. If you get in there, those are probably going to die anyways. The Burrow pays off beautifully against this Eraser. Let's take a look over here. Oh, excellent plague. I would be so angry if I was playing this game. Getting a little bit angry right now watching that. Uh, so he plagues this army. Going to be a little bit useless. Has to pull it back. Gypsy taking a fourth base. He did take the third during this. We kind of looked at it, but didn't speak about it before. Two battle cruisers on the way. Third starport. Absolutely awesome to see. Uh, you know, you need one starport per gas, basically, when you're going SK Terran. So we'll see if he stays on battle cruiser or he wants to go back into vessels. Maybe he wants to add in more drop ships. There's a lot of different uh, choices that you can make here. Now, Gypsy, uh, the plague did wear off, and he's going to go ahead and start healing again, but another plague comes out immediately. This is something Hawk's really good at. He's a very grindy player, uh, and we can see him going forward and, and just kind of grinding with the plague, right? Gaining value with plague. Plague, run away. Run back. Plague, you know, pick off a few units here and there, right? Throws down the Dark Swarm. He's killing some of this bio. It's a huge amount of supply on both sides, and it definitely... Right now, Gypsy is winning. Just to make it clear, but the game is not decided. Hawk has a good, strong three base economy. He has a few minutes before his main geyser runs out, right? He has like just about three minutes before that's empty. And when that empties, if he doesn't have more bases or a ton of damage on Gypsy, that's where we're like, okay, this game's almost over. But as is, you know, Gypsy, he's just going to try to stop everything that's coming out. You see a few ultras and a defiler coming up, throws down the dark storm. There are a couple of radiates. Can whittle him down over time. The two uh, battle cruisers coming to kind of fight here. You're going to start seeing Hawk throw down a lot of spores. Uh, Spore is going to be your best anti uh, battle cruiser thing that you can really do here. Also, looks like we have vessel energy on the way. Love to see that. I think it's one. Of the, it's probably the most underutilized upgrade in the game for how good it is. It's actually legit, really, really good. Okay, so right now, Hawk trying to counterattack into this third base location. There are a couple of bunkers here that will slow him down greatly. Of course, the Ultras can tank so much damage. They're going to be able to help take that down. And now a Ling Defiler attack seems to be moving up. A lot of these vessels already plagued. Don't really have anything to finish them off, unfortunately, right now. Throws down that Dark Swarm. In the meantime, the Ultras definitely hurting this base up here. Probably don't want to irradiate those. They'll kill the SCVs even quicker dealing with this bunker but doesn't seem like he's going to be able to force a lift off on the command center or anything hawk now sending more and more lings out the supply actually gets a lot more even now doesn't it oh okay well these have already been plagued so they're they're sitting pretty low on health he's trying to hold position them where they'll hit the gas but yeah when you stack flying units on top of each other even if you hold position they start to spread out that's why you hold a, a mutalisks with an overlord across the map right so that was actually like that was a, that was a very Terran mistake <laughs> uh anyways the uh marines up here holding on against a little bit of zergling harassment a lot more coming out from hawk right now one two upgrades not too bad but gypsy is just about to be on three two i believe yep just about very close to three two now his battle cruiser still adding a lot of value three bcs at a time no spellcasters here. So he, you know, Lings alone are not going to clear that. This is not a Protoss base. This is a Terran base. It's got bunkers. It's got Marines with Stim and 3-2. 
So definitely needs to think about how he wants to try to break that. All right, battle cruisers coming down. Defiler's coming out with the uh, Ling Lurker Ultra. Looks like a pretty scary army, but the uh, Irradiate's getting some good hits. No anti-air whatsoever. So the feels like the vessels, uh, you know, they're, they've been plagued, but there's been no no attempt to actually kill them. So they're still getting all those irradiates off. Now, some good Dark Storms go down. Threw down another plague in there as well, and he actually kills this army off. Hawk coming up once again. Is Hawk going to be able to take this game? He's taking it to fourth base. Long time coming. This is empty now, right? So he's on two gas. He has three minutes until that gas is done. Right, so he's on basically two and one-fourth gas, uh, which is pretty low for Zerg. Like, you really need three gas or four gas. So right now, running up, continuing to attack here. Killing off a few units. You know, this base is still mining while this is empty. This is empty. So right now, it's like one to two bases mining for Gypsy. Definitely wants to keep it up on two. Anytime you fall, fall to one base, you can't really keep your army very high. Really an interesting game here from Hawk, the way that he's played this. And he's still, like, buying a lot of time here. He's utilizing Dark Swarms and Plagues, just kind of slowing things down for Gypsy. And notice how Gypsy's just putting out fires. This is a place you never want to be in against Defiler play. If you're clearing out places Defilers are going, Zerg is really dictating the flow of the game at that point, right? They have some map control. They're, they're coming out. They're getting where they need to be. And GG is called. Gypsy gives it up. That was a pretty impressive win from Hawk. Because Gypsy, like, was in a very good spot. He was applying, I guess, more of passive pressure. Uh, you know, like, he was macroing while he was irradiating. He did do, a like, a, a drop, a drop, but not, like, there was no, like, really big pushes because he couldn't really do the pushes. But, yeah, that was uh, that was quite an excellent game. All right, we're going to be going into game number four. Glad that Hawk could take that map. Feels like he's back in it now. Our next map going to be Retro. All right, guys. Here we go. We're getting into it. It's going to be game number four. And we have Gypsy here leading 2-1 in the top left of Retro. <clears throat> in the top right, we have Hawk. Looks like they had a slight pause there at the beginning of the game. Hope you guys are enjoying uh, the North American StarCraft Masters. Definitely a very fun tournament. Again, a big thanks to Mooney for, uh, you know, supporting it, making... He, it was all his idea. He put up a huge prize pool, kind of reached out to me to, to help with some casting and, and getting the players together and... Big thanks to all the players for playing as well. Always fun to have a tournament that actually means something, right? Uh, with $1,000 on the line, I believe first place is 600 Top four all make money. So everyone you see playing today is is uh, cashing. But yeah, when you have 600 bucks for first place, like that's, that is pretty damn legit. So everyone is definitely putting out their absolute best games. Now we have a forward eight racks from Gypsy, but luckily for Hawk, his overlord's going the right direction. And as it goes down here, he's going to see that it's eight racks and he can prepare accordingly. Now, if you didn't go pool first, well, eight racks first off is not an all in. It's just a pressure build. Oh, he's really late sending this out. Is this for an SCV? I, I mean, a depot? Yeah. Okay. That was that was a, a bit late getting out there, unfortunately. Um, he's, he's going to have a slight supply block when this finishes. Ooh. Right? Yeah, yeah, he is. Just slight. It's not that big. But, uh, you know, when you're doing an 8 racks, it's not a happy place to be. Anyways, um, 8 racks is more of a pressure build. So even if you scout it quickly, it's not like it's dead, right? Okay, he sees exactly what it is. He, Gypsy sees the Overlord, so he'll pull this SCV over into the right direction, coming from the other angle. And this will actually tell him if Zerglings are on the way as well, right? Because he hasn't actually scouted yet. So coming up here... And, yeah, he's blocking that ramp for a moment as this one goes 
forward the drone waiting to put some damage onto that scv spawning pool on the way now gypsy will send the marines but how much damage will you actually get you know you have to start building a bunker that forces the drones to come down so you can fight the drones this bunker will never finish uh but you have to start it it's just kind of like okay i'm you know we each have a role to play i threaten a very strong push you pull your drones and we micro and we see who comes out on top so if gypsy can get two drones he's going to be happy if he gets more than that he's going to be ecstatic let's see okay this drone's very badly hurt would have been better if hawk had just pulled that one gypsy's going to target it there's one drone target's going to get a second gets the second can he get a third gets a third but he does lose all three marines okay you're going to cancel this he loses three marines he should turn one scv around to continue scouting but uh yeah, I, I would still say that that is gypsy favored there. I think that that's a better situation for Terran. Generally, it's right around two that you kill and you're happy. And again, the Marines, especially when you have an airtight wall, this is a wall that Zerglings cannot get through. So like you can sit here with like one Marine and kill a million Lings if you repair. So you're just not afraid. And also the Marines pop out on the inside. So this is like a perfect wall, perfect situation to have done some economic damage. But Hawk's not dead. It's not like he had already bought gas or anything, right? Like, if he was already, like, mining some gas, then suddenly it's like, okay, I have even less minerals and even one less drone because I made the gas so early, and it just gets gross. Now, from here, plus one going up, I think this is the perfect opportunity for that. Uh, you know, you're pretty uncheesable because the wall. There are still some cheeses that can occur. You know, if Hawk did something absolutely wild, like a Hydra all-in, that sounds silly. But this is exactly the type of situation where something like that could work. But if they're going two racks, you're dead, right? So there's like so many different risks in StarCraft. That's why I like to kind of think about poker a little bit more than chess with it. It's like there's there's all these different wild things that you can be like, okay, well, the percentage isn't high, but maybe I feel behind and maybe that's what I want to do. Anyways, plus one gets started for Gypsy. Has the Academy on the way. Command Center finishing up. Looking over at Hawk's side of the map. You know, his layer about, uh, you know, a third of the way done. Maybe a little bit more. Macro hatch in that main base. And yeah, this like, uh, not entirely sure what Hawk's game plan will be. I kind of assume he'll just go Mutalisk here once again. Throws down a single creep colony, you know. Just playing a little bit safe. You never really know what's going on from here. Some people like could go like a quick factory or something. So I think it's good to just get one, one static D uh, building and, and just drone up pretty heavily, right? I think he's pretty safe. So the Spire coming up. SCV still trying to scout. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky. So Hawk is gonna take one of the hardest to scout locations. This is really far away for a third base and really kind of random, right? Uh, both the bases over here make sense in a way. The the bottom corner, you can just put lurkers on the ramp. The the natural you can take, and that allows you to take your fourth base very easily. Oh, he actually pulls it back. Okay, so he thinks twice about it, or he misclicked. We don't know which one it is. But yeah, he's going to go for one of the more reasonable, quote-unquote, bases here in the bottom right. Ling's check in the front. He knows it's plus one at this point. When you run up and they have one medic at like six minutes, it's pretty clear that he went engineering bay first. Gypsy with just a single commsat. I actually did not get to see where he scanned. I wasn't paying enough attention for that, but uh, yeah, actually a little bit hard to say. Um, I guess we'll just wait. He'll He's getting his second scan, so he probably did something like scan the natural and doesn't quite have enough intel. If he already scanned, either way you want to scan again anyways, because it's a slower game. Even if there's a spire coming, since there's three hatch, like you could have, you know, you could have like one tech at one base and one tech at the other base. Okay, scans up here, kind of in between the two. Sees that spire, he sees that it's finished, but he sees drones popping and not a lot of uh, eggs here. So he's gonna know that mutas are not coming right this second, but he'll start his turrets anyway. This is not like a an emergency throw the turrets down thing. These are just a little bit early, but I think only Flash would uh, <laughs> get those turrets like, 12 seconds later because he can so I, I you know sometimes there's too much optimization done by strong players a lot of the times it's better to just get your stuff up get your get yourself safe you know 
All right, another missile turret goes down. Range is done. Plus one about to finish. Uh, I would love to see him start plus one armor quickly, but he might opt for a faster factory there. Generally, you just want to get that factory up uh, as quickly as you can. And he actually does start the plus one right away. Nice. Nice. I like it when people do what I want them to do. I, I really like the quick plus one right now. It's It feels very strong uh, currently. And I, I don't even... I actually... This is like a more recent thing that I've been thinking about. About how quick plus one is actually pretty good right now. And I actually don't... I'm not even 100% sure why. I can just feel it. I'll figure it out. I'll let you guys know when I figure it out. But it feels very good right now for some reason. Anyways... Uh, the Muta's just kind of dogging the Marines a little bit. You know, he wants to buy some time to get his Lurkers up. See, he hatches three Hydras here. He's getting his, his guys on gas. He'll he'll make some, some Lurkers over here as well, getting a little bit of Static D. He just wants to slow this. So this is... I actually think this is an expertly played game from Hawk. He really read the situation correctly. If you look at what Gypsy's doing, later factory, right? Very quick plus one armor. Very quick plus one attack, five raxes, tons of marines and medics. So if he just puts down lurkers and gets a really quick hive, it's like, oh damn, we don't have starports. And he, as soon as you have lurkers here, you can't break this. He doesn't have lurkers here. Oh my god, is he actually just gonna break it right this second, dude? Uh oh, uh oh, oh no. Okay, he's gonna kill all the mutas easily. This is plus one and there's only two sunks. More Marines coming. I think Gypsy just won the game. Oh, that's anticlimactic as hell. This was a very good build from Hawk. That was a very, that was very smart what he was doing. He was just barely not getting his lurkers in time. So just razor sharp timing from Gypsy. Nails him. That was gonna be a hard game because he had late starports. So like he found Literally the moment where he could win the game without it getting hard. What can you do? What can you do? Uh, well played by Hawk. Uh, even better played by Gypsy, who's going to go to the finals. All right, guys, we're going to go into... Oh, my God, I said Striker before, I think, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> it's not Striker in the uh, other match. It is uh, Crossy, of course, against Boa. Striker had lost the Zerg versus Zerg in the previous round. Uh, I don't know why I was thinking that. Well, Striker is also one of the best players. But anyways, we're going into the next uh, round of four match. It's going to be a Zerg versus Protoss. It's going to be Crossy going up against Boa. Uh, for my money, Crossy, the best Zerg outside of Korea. Uh, very, very strong at the moment. Has been playing a lot. Had a great PSL run in the last Pro League. Uh, and is just is is playing some amazing StarCraft. And, of course, he's going to be going up against Boa here. Uh, this Definitely one of the strongest Protosses in North America, if not the strongest. Here we go. In the top left of this best of five starting out on Citadel, we have Crossy. And in the bottom left, we have Boa. So... <clears throat> the way that I like to describe it is, like, I think Boa, by a good margin, has the strongest Protoss versus Terran. I think there's a lot of good Protoss versus Protoss players in North America. And then for Protoss versus Zerg, I feel like, uh, I feel like Jayun is a bit better than Boa at that matchup. And maybe Dragon is similar level to, uh, Boa at that matchup as well. Uh, but but Boa is better against Terran than those two. So it's hard to say exactly who the best Protoss in North America is. I, if you called it Boa, I wouldn't really argue. Uh, I think most people probably wouldn't argue. Really a very, very strong player. But sometimes he loses uh, Protoss for Sir games that maybe he shouldn't, right? But that's, I think that's uh, for everyone, right? Sometimes a Zerg player loses a game against Terran they shouldn't. Sometimes a Terran player loses a game against Protoss that he shouldn't. Probably all the time, really. And then, of course, uh, Protoss against Zerg, kind of a similar thing where you're going to just die sometimes. Well, either way, uh, this is an overpool from Crossy. Uh, Boa just going pylon scout here. So he will be going for a forge. Uh, and, you know, he'll he'll double scout as well. So he'll send this to the north. And he should be fine here against the overpool. 
probe going to start traveling up here now. And we'll see how aggressive Crossy really wants to get. Crossy does play a very aggressive Zerg versus Protoss style. Uh, I feel like I see him go on three base and, and get really attacking quite often. Uh, I don't feel like I see as many big macro games like you might out of like Striker, for instance. I feel like Striker, I always see a fourth base in, in ZVP. So he goes behind, he actually throws a pylon down. Now, is this a fake or is this real? I think it's a fake. I believe. Four lings on the way. Oh! No, he's actually trying a cannon rush. Okay. Second probe is coming. Four lings are coming. Does this work? I don't think this works, does it? Maybe. No, he cancels. Okay. But only four lings were made anyways. Okay. I, I've, oh, six lings. Okay, he did force two more lings from the, 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 the from everything going up. That, that was weird. I don't know. I, I'm not sure what to think about that. It feels like he kind of like hurt his own build order a bit, which is unfortunate. Uh, does pull some probes up to the front, so maybe a little bit nervous about Crossy trying to run by. Throws down that gateway, uh, and of course, he has to make sure that this cannon gets up. You cannot let these links in your base. Loses one probe. Okay, good blocking. Excellent blocking here from Boa. Excellent blocking. Damn, really, really well done. Wait, he only lost one probe there, I believe. Now, if you're very careful here, I think you can kill these links without losing probes. Very good pull. Look at this. Good drilling. Ooh, nice micro there from Crossy, though. Ah, ah, that's too many probes dead. Look at the worker count. 13 drones against 11 probes, and you're going to lose this pylon. Oof. Third hatch coming up for Crossy. I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes three hatch Hydra here. It's like you're, you're so far behind as Boa. You've lost a lot of workers. You don't have any zealots even being made. Your probe count is super, super low. How do you even scout a three hatch Hydra? I don't think you can, right? Like you can send a, a probe out, I guess, but like you need every probe mining you can get. I feel like here is Bo, I would try to play like, just know the timing you need cannons against that maybe and throw them up. I don't know, play blind in some way. So yeah, this does not, this does not look very good for our Protoss player. Hydralisk Den is done. Hydralisk Speed on the way. Going to clear out this uh, this pylon. Kind of funny there's nothing in front scouting this. Looks like he is pulling an Overlord over here. Has one just kind of scouting both of the entrance areas towards this main base. Nothing towards the third, but that's pretty far out anyways. Any scouting that Boa would send out would probably go towards the main to try to get maximum info. Stargate is coming up. Uh, unfortunately, this is a little bit late, so... Normally what happens with everything timed in a normal game where no one took damage, uh, I believe what generally the Corsair will fly over the Hydras like maybe here or here, like somewhere in that in this range, I believe the Hydras are going to hit right as the Corsair is coming out, right? So even though that's only like that distance, you know, 10 seconds can be the difference between life and death, right? StarCraft is sometimes a game of, of mere seconds. Now, the Lings catch the Zealot. That's a big catch because now it does not get to scout the Hydras. Hydra's going to go across the map. In fact, they're going to get there before the Corsair's out. My bad. I, I totally... <laughs> I, I, for some reason, I thought that that would not be the case. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I was right. We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, the Hydras are starting to come up. Another cannon gets started. He doesn't want to show them until he's ready for the bust. Range is on the way. All right, if he just runs up, I think he wins. Yeah, see? Look at that. The Corsair hits just... Uh, dude, I'm so smart. It's crazy. Okay, comes up. And yeah, he's he's busting pretty quickly here. The probes come out to fight. It's actually a pretty good probe micro. Like, he's he's getting the probes on top of those uh, Hydras very, very quickly. Now, he sacked the Corsair. He's trying to get the Overlord so he could pop out a DT with his Templar Archives coming up. Uh, to try to hold this, but that's not going to end up working. He has one more cannon. Boa trying to hold on here. 
Crossy though is, is like I think you just you wait for a few more hydras and you're gonna probably kill him. Dude, it's 20 drones to 21 probes. And Crossy can switch into drones if he wants, but yeah, he's just he's dealing so much damage. GG. Crossy, gonna take game number one. Rough one. Rough one there for uh for Boa. It I, it was a faulty cannon rush, really. <clears throat> uh, you know that's it's too bad. Um, would have liked to see if he just played it normal. If he just gets up there, sees the hatchery, knows that it's overpool based on hatchery health. Maybe maybe we get like a good solid epic macro game. Can I pay out the Gamba from four games ago? Do we not have a mod in here? Is there no really actually no mod? I don't know how to do Gamba. We have no mods. Okay, who wants to be a mod? Real quick, who wants to be a mod? Oh, we have a mod here. Thank you very much, Wild Mage. Appreciate it. I'll start considering a new mod. Anyways, uh, we're gonna get into game number two here. Let's go. All right, in the bottom left of Retro, we have Crossy. In the bottom right, we have Boa. And yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's see how this goes, if we can have a better game. Um, this map, I actually, I've enjoyed casting slash watching, uh, Protoss vs. Zerg games on, on Retro. I think it's got some really interesting things about it. I feel like there's a lot of roaming about for Protoss. Zerg gets into very strong turtle positions, but Crossy is such an aggressive Zerg, we don't really know how that's going to end up going down. So Boa throws down uh, his pylon and just goes back. So maybe just a gateway expansion here. Put some zealot pressure on. Crossy looks like he wants to go for a nine pool. Okay, we'll see what the nine pool ends up doing for him. He is good at his aggression. So maybe he can find something to do. Okay, yeah, just the extractor trick. I would have been pretty surprised if he tried to get like speed there or something. That is not that is not something done against Protoss very often, I'd say. Well, while we uh while we wait for the game to pick up a little bit, uh I do want to just mention, right? Like this game, I'm casting this live on my Twitch, but it's going to be going directly to my uh, Artos Casts YouTube channel. Uh, I do appreciate anyone who subscribes to that channel and checks it out. Put a lot of work into it. It's got, uh, at this point, like probably a thousand casted games of StarCraft 1 on it. Uh, and yeah, it's it just it gets at least one new one every single day. So hope you guys enjoy that. And uh, definitely, definitely do check it out because I think it's probably the some of the best content that I ever make. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. Now, uh, looks like we have six lings coming out. The Overlord sees what's going on. First Zealot walking out a little bit. As he sees these uh, lings, he will turn the Zealot around, most likely. So what you do here is you generally go three Zealot Nexus, and you put a Zealot and Probe on the ramp, right? And then you kind of hold against any any silliness. They, they get here when you have two Zealots, but you'll have the third Zealot making. And, well, right now, uh, because he's chasing the probe, like, Boa does not have to do that right at the second. But, yeah, you kind of see, right? They're, these are going to try to get up. Oh, wow, he's not blocking. Could have had Crossy run in there. All right, down goes the Nexus. Probe. Ooh, the probe harassing this drone trying to make the third base. Kind of like it. We'll drill through, and the third base will go down.
Mm, yeah, it, this stuff is all very standard. Nothing, nothing too big to say about that. We'll see if Crossy has any uh, aggressive inklings. I don't think he'll go 3H Hydra this game. I think he's going to go directly up to Lair. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense to go 3 hatch Hydra here. Um, oh, I like the Zergling speed, though. Like, you kind of need the Zergling speed to surround the Zealots. The thing is, he hasn't lost any Zealots. He hasn't thrown any away. So if you're going to go 3 hatch Hydra, like, the Zealots are going to figure it out. You know, it's not going to be the Corsair that flies over them on their way. It's going to be the Zealots, most likely, that are going to walk across the map, force you to make more Lings than you want, and yeah. Kind of interesting how he has this, by the way. He has the probes kind of blocking holes where the links can come in. The only reason you would do that is if you think your your zealots are going to have to walk forward to attack. So that's that was kind of a weird, weird thing to see. But okay, no harm, no foul. Throws down his cannon here, and well, that's an interesting position. That feels like the beginning of a strong cannon defense. Like, this is to block the forge from being picked off. Like, if you bring hydras up and just hold position them, this is going to hit those. You can't hit this without being hit by this but with with the hydras. If you get the range upgrade, it becomes different. You can put them up here and hit it, but not even... I don't believe you can stand a hydra over here and hit it. So, I like that first cannon, actually. That's really smart. Now, looking back across his base, I... Oh! Okay. So, uh, what Crossy is doing here is a very new build. It's range. So you go six Hydralisks with the range upgrade and mass speedling, right? So the Hydralisks with this range upgrade gun down the wall, and then you just kind of swarm with the lings and target down cannons. Now, I, I, you know, this is, it's a popular build right now. We've seen it a lot from pro Zergs uh, in obviously like uh, just, just about every Zerg in the world, I think at this point is probably trying it a little bit. I don't have like a strong opinion as to how good it is or is not compared to some of these other builds. I'm honestly a bit unsure about it. Uh, you know, being a Terran player, I don't play against it or with it ever. I just get to cast it from time to time. But yeah, it's been around for, for a few months at least now. Now another macro hatch going down. You can see his economy pretty reasonable considering uh, he is doing a, an aggressive attack. Getting that fourth hatch up. The Hydra's being made. It's got Lings in, in decent positions. There's a lot of Zealots here, man. Uh, now, the Stargate is making a Corsair, and he's going for the Citadel. So, obviously, legs are going to be on the way. Plus one. Ooh, the second cannon. Very, very good. Let's see. So, here's five. Oh, he's actually making more. He's getting Hydra speed now as well. Interesting. Oh, no, there is the six. Okay, because I was saying before, you normally do it with six. The, when I see the rush, I normally see it with seven or eight, but then I actually asked one of the NA Zergs, and they told me it's supposed to be six. So that's where I'm getting the six number from. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, the fact that he's getting uh, the speed upgrade as well, right, that, that definitely uh, tells us that he has even more aggressive ideas in his mind. So throwing down three more cannons might even need more than that. Bow with a very nice uh, row of zealots here. They're going to suck up a little bit of damage. Now they don't have their plus one. They don't have legs. So they're not going to trade that well against these lings. Look at this. The Hydra's adding a ton of damage. The lings mostly tanking. They're going to go ahead and pull back. The Hydra's doing a pretty good job. Okay, he runs forward, but the zealots come out to put damage on. I think Boa holds this. I think he does. Like, the Zelts have just enough health. He is going to push it back. Okay, more cannons stop starting. The plus one is actually going to finish. Yep, there it is. Just finishes in time. The cannon's still trying to finish here. I think he's... Ooh, this is kind of crazy. Runs in to hit this one, but takes hits from four plus the probes. This is an excellent hold from Boa. Obviously, last game, a lot of things went wrong. Uh, so, like, it looked like Boa was outclassed. But I, this is something I've seen from him before where he does, like, these perfect, magnificent holds. Now, that being said, this needs to be canceled. He does not need this one. He does not need this one. I'm just disappointed. All right. Uh... 
you know, the thing is, anytime you can cancel a cannon during one of these, uh, it's it's really, really good. Now, he didn't cancel that, I think. Um, well, I'm not sure why. Maybe he, he had to have thought that there was still going to be more attacks coming. His Corsair is over here. I, I feel like he might have been able to have enough information that this wasn't going to happen. It's, it felt very held, even not looking at the Zerg bases. Uh, but yeah, it, every cannon, don't forget, every cannon you make costs the same as a gateway, right? And you want to get up to like your eight gates as quickly as possible. So when that's being slowed down, it makes a difference. It absolutely makes a difference. So Boa right now adding a ton of gates. He got that secondary forge rather quickly because the first one was dying. Has that uh, plus one armor on the way. Psy Storm on the way. Popping out High Templars already to build up that very critical energy. And this looks like it's going to normalize into like a, a, a pretty normal macro game, I think. Uh, one thing to mention is that Crossy is really droned up heavily. Really, really heavily. Evolution Chamber on the way. Spire as well. That could be interesting. That could be very interesting, the Spire here. Uh, because Boa has the one Corsair only. He lost his other one. This one took damage. He never got plus one or anything like that, which is fine because he was playing against like a Hydra Rush. But if he tries to come out... Oh, look, there's two Dark Templars. Okay, so we'll talk about that in a second because he might be going Maelstrom. Um... If he tries to come out with Zealot High Templar, the Mutas are going to kill him. Like, they'll just target down the High Templars. You're going to be in trouble. Okay, Dragoon range. Storm is done. Dark Archon? Dude, they're, look, they're thinking about it. Oh, they just wanted to get to know each other first. Okay, so uh, this is a great play. Uh, Dark Archon is becoming more and more popular. Uh, you know, it, I feel like for a long time it was only best I ever saw going for Dark Archons, but Maelstrom to freeze the Mutas and then storm them down. Just a magnificent spell. He has Maelstrom on the way. Of course, it's going to be just under a minute before he has the energy for that, and you have to keep it hidden because as soon as they see the Dark Archon, they play differently. Like, you need them to come in in a group so the Dark Archon can just snag everything. Boa right now, sewn up tight. Looks very good defensively. All right, so a lot of Dragoons coming out right now as well. Let's let's actually take a look real quick. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so he does have the eight gates. So Dragoon, Dragoon range is going to be finishing up. I believe the High Templar count is not as high as I thought it was. Okay, so he only made those early two. So he is going to be a little bit light on Psystorm, but he's getting into his uh, Dragoons very quickly. So he's going to have a huge amount of Dragoons. Boa is going for like a very strong push here. This does not look like a game. Ooh, gets the Maelstrom down. Beautiful, beautiful play. Kills off every single Mutalisk. 100% worth. Great to see it. Okay, so Boa is going to be going for a really strong attack. It's mostly Dragoon focus. He will have some Zealots. You do Dragoons can't fight Zerg alone. Every Zerg unit counters a Dragoon. But if the Dragoons are not actually being attacked by anything... They're really good. <laughs> it's, it's a real, it's such a funny unit in this matchup. But yeah, it, as long as you have like Zealots up there, like tanking some damage for them, or you have Psy Storms punishing things, trying to attack them, then you can be good. Oh, dude, this is the sickest two snipes. Those were all of his Eye Templars. Oh, wait, no, he did have a... Th okay, my bad. He hid those somewhere. He tricked me. Uh, so he does have two more, but still, that's really bad to lose those right there. They did not get the value he was hoping. Now, he clears out this area. It looks like Crossy was thinking about a Hydra uh, Lurker containment up here. Not going to be allowed to do so. But yeah, I, I really think Bo is planning an attack. The supply of Crossy is kind of insane. If he just sets up like a really good area here, this is going to be tough. He has a fourth base up as well against two base Boa. Boa has to basically go kill him. I feel like Crossy would be better served over here, but maybe he needs the spread. This is a huge, very wide spread of Hydraling. Uh, has a few Lurkers in there as well. And you can see as the Zealots get chewed up, the Dragoons have no chance against this army. 
Nice storm goes down, but yeah, you look like look at that. Seriously, dragoons cannot fight alone against Zerg. They're just so weak uh, in that in that regard. But such a good support unit. I can't even think of another unit that's like that. I really can't. Where it's like you want a bunch of them, but they just they can't fight alone. <laughs> they just they like vultures do better against dragoons than dragoons do against Zerg units in general. Okay, throws down a Maelstrom. He's stuck up here anyways, so you may as well utilize that Storm. Or that, you know, the, Mael, the Maelstrom. Uh, <laughs> gonna pick up that Dark Archon, unfortunately. That does open up an opportunity, maybe for more Mutas, but I think based on the amount of Dragoons he's seen, it doesn't make sense. Dude, this Crossy is up 30 supply. He's up 30 supply. It's two base against four base with the fifth base coming up. That's absurd. He's so far ahead right now. Boa is very close to dead. He is very close to dead. It, like, I think to win this game as Boa, you need to get your third up immediately and you need Zerg to try to finish you because they think that they're way ahead, which they are. But like you need them to try to finish you so that you can have really cost efficient defenses. I think that's the only real way to win. Look at this, lots of great tactics from Crossy as well. Goes ahead and uh, puts that egg down on the ramp. So he traps these zealots up here and just flanks everything. Dude, this game's over. This is crazy. How You can never win from here, I don't think. Look at this, yeah, he's 50% more workers. <laughs> he's up 20 army supply. And don't forget, most of the Zerg units are one supply. So it's like, yeah, his army's way, way better here. He has the hive up, more macro hatches. Mm. Boa continuing to macro. Actually, he has a little bit of a mineral bank. So, you know, maybe he can get up here, throw a probe down, get some cannons. Try to make it work, but a defiler mount is on the way. Melee upgrades, adrenal glands for Zerglings. Cannons are going to be outdated, as these Dragoons are as well. Boa moves towards the center. Yeah, look at this. Immediately hits this base. Crossy just dominating at the moment. Trying to push up. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, I think you can take a look at this and see just what a struggle this is for our Protoss player. Like, Boa is very good, but just it, it felt like Crossy just kind of out-optimized in a lot of ways. You know, he put that pressure on. Boa never got any real counter pressure going. Crossy kept his macro going really, really smoothly. He's got so many bases now. Like, you could put Mini, Rain, Bisu snow all together on team melee for boa and crossy would smash them it wouldn't even be close uh it's just there's there is no way to win from this position at this point i would say like <laughs> it's it's really bad like the best storms in the world i don't think equalize the amount of mining that crossy has going on and the amount of tech that crossy has going on the most ridiculously awesome storms. It's just, it, he has everything. He's got everything in the world. He's going to take more bases. But was really trying to hold on and get this base up. It is a little bit late for a third base, obviously. But, like, Crossy has more than anticipated. I, like, I think a lot of people might look at this and be like, why isn't Boa left? I don't think Boa quite realizes how much Crossy had. If you gave him vision for a moment, he would just leave the game. Like, Boa can look at this and, like, like we can, right? Like, we can zoom out and look at the bases and everything and the tech and just be like, yes, he can't win. Uh, when you're in the game, it feels different, right? Like, you don't necessarily know quite how much they have. So, he might be looking at this and saying, yeah, this is kind of bad. He's on four base, probably. I'm taking my third. Maybe I can split map or something. But the fact of the matter is, Crossy has everything and has had everything for it forever. And, you know, he's getting drop upgrades, he's getting Plague, continuing Carapace into plus three. And, uh, yeah. 
Boa's chances have already evaporated. Still, you know, he's trying to make something happen. He's trying to get another uh, Nexus up. He knows that a third base isn't going to be enough. He is going to need more. Does plant that Nexus. Going to try to attack 12. Look at that. Attacking. I kind of like it. I wonder if we'll see a counterattack by Crossy. Like, he has Defilers now, right? So he can actually kind of attack anywhere. Some great, great storms. He's going to be able to kill this hatch, I think. Like, if Crossy sends everything, he won't be able to. But yeah, it looks like he's going to attack elsewhere. I think it's better than saving a base is killing a base right now for our Zerg. Like, no question about that. Look at that. Once again, egg on the ramp. Dark Swarm over the egg. Absolutely brutal. And I think as you lose this Nexus, Bo will just GG. It doesn't matter if Crossy only has four bases at this point. It's like, yeah, you just he's not going to be mining. Nothing left. Absolutely nothing left then. Throws the storms down, trying his best to try to hold on there. And he will end up, at least, I guess, killing off this army that killed his third base. Another attack over towards that fourth. And yeah, we should be seeing a GG. I promise you, <laughs> we'll see a GG eventually. Oh my God. There it is. Okay. Okay. Long time coming for that GG. Um, so Crossy leads two to zero. Uh, that was really fantastic macro from Crossy. Like, I know I kind of built him up as an aggressive player, and he is, and you saw him be aggressive at the beginning of the game, but his follow-up macro there was particularly impressive. I was surprised at how many drones he got so quickly on, on the additional bases uh, while it's still keeping the pressure up. I do think Boa may be slightly over-defended with the cannons. Maybe he needed to get out there with Zealot Legs a little bit, you know, like mass up some Zealots a little bit quicker to try to do some counterplay to curb drone production, that type of thing. It's tough. It's tough. We're going to be going into uh, game number three. And here we go. Let's get into it. So we are on Apocalypse. And up at 12 o'clock, we have Boa. Over here in the bottom left, we have Crossy. So, uh, it is match point for Crossy. Boa has, you know, a long way to go to come back here. Has to win three in a row if he wants to go to the finals to play against Gypsy. Of course, in our previous series, uh, Hawk was in the same position and pulled out a very strong game then. So, I'm hoping to see the same here from Boa. Uh, you know, Apocalypse has its own difficulties and strengths. We'll talk about those as the map is revealed a little bit more. But uh, yeah, I hope that you guys are enjoying. I really do like to uh, occasionally get some casts in. You know, obviously I've been doing uh, NAPL, the North American Pro League, quite a bit. Uh, and I like to get some casts in of, of just some tournament modes for the North American guys as well. I'm really happy with kind of where the, the non-Korean scene is at. It really feels like full of strong players right now. Everyone's pretty active. You know, I think people like Zen and, and Jae Yoon and Erniach and Zero, everyone's doing a great job, uh, you know, putting together competitions, you know, this in this case, Mooney as well. Uh, it's it's great. And it's, it's so much more fun, right? Like to have a set of players that kind of live near you, they, you know, in, in the same country, you can play in good latency and have good competitive games and the thing is, these guys are very good. Like, both of these players are 2,400 plus MMR, right? So that's, like, legitimately very, very strong players. So while it may not be the same as, like, 
the players in ASL, obviously. Uh, these guys are, are badass and, and deserve some respect for, for how they play. So hope you guys are enjoying that. I think it's important to do from time to time. All right. So it is a Forge Fast expansion. Does not scout Crossy first. Going to go across. Next is going to be on the way. Six lings being made. And he's going to hold probe production here to get his cannons up. So uh, Crossy, of course, does not know yet where Boa's at or what Boa is doing. So we'll see if he chases this probe. If he chases the probe, it's really good for Boa. Now, notice how Boa goes in front of the links. He's trying to slow them slightly. You can see how some of them are, like, changing where they're running. Sometimes you can slow them down a little bit here. See? He's hitting S and then clicks it again. He, like, slows it down. See how he's getting those a little bit further behind? That'll allow more cannon hits, right? If they start to run by, but in this particular case, the cannon was not ready. So that didn't make that much of a difference, but sometimes it does. Oh, God. Oh, God. Is this going to be like game one again? I hope not. I hope not. Oh. Drops to 11 probes, and still there's two lings in his base. Painful, painful, painful for Boa. Crossy immediately with the third hatch at that third base location. Probes trying to catch these lings. They might be able to, but he's losing a lot of mining time doing this. Okay, gets us around. Oh, my God. It wiggles out with one health. He'll get it, though. Come on. There you go. Might be time to just mine and send, like, one probe after this. Lots of lost mining time, unfortunately. And, again, his probe count not looking super hot right now. Ling continuing to harass. He can't get another probe kill, though. Like, Bo will not let that happen. There's not that much going on right now. He can definitely prevent that. Zealot being sent out on the map, though. So at least he'll get a little bit of maybe counter pressure. I'm sorry. Third hatchery almost done. Layer on the way. Cybernetic score coming up for Boa. Yeah. It's, yeah, Boa, you know, it definitely looks much better than it was game one when the Lings got in. Without any questions, much better than that. Notice how Crossy just trying to keep this alive. Ooh, nice flank there by Boa. Good to see it. Finally gets that out of there. Doesn't have to worry about the Ling in his base anymore. In the meantime, Zella in Crossy's base over here. Going by that mineral patch. It's not going to live much longer, but you know what? He's getting good intel. He sees that there's a lair. We might actually get like a more normal looking game since there's no quick Hydra bust or anything like that. So Bo is going to be able to get into his Corsairs, and, and we'll see where he goes from there. Stargate goes up right under the Overlord, but, I mean, you would expect that anyways. It would be weird if it, it didn't. Zealot being made to help hold this wall. And that's exactly how you want it as well. You want the probe pulled back a little bit behind the Zealot. So if you're going to attack the probe, you have to run by the Zealot and get hit by it as well. So Citadel comes up. And he does have that second gas coming up as well. We'll see if he goes for legs or he goes for uh, a, a quick Dark Templar build. Quick Dark Templar builds have been a little bit popular lately uh, in, in PvZ. I'm actually not entirely sure what dictates the rotation of quicker uh, legs versus quicker Dark Templar. But I'm not sure which Boa prefers. We'll see in a moment. So Spire is almost done. Of course, there will be popping shortly. And it is going to be that most likely quick Dark Templar. Okay, the Corsair is out. Time to go and scout. Uh, taking a look, there is a second gas, so very likely we're going to see some Mutalisks here. Definitely some Scourge. Well, actually, as I say that, it's funny. Okay, <laughs> yeah, there's the Scourge. Starts five Mutas. Uh, five Mutas, of course, is the number you need to one-shot probe, so Crossy probably going to be looking for a little bit of damage there. He sees the second gas, so see how he turns around instantly? 
checks up here. He's going to make cannons in his mineral lines now. Absolutely needs to. Okay, there's one. This is one to protect the the uh, the Stargate. You need a cannon that can hit here. This is where the Corsair pops out. So if two Scourge sit here, it insta-kills the Corsair when it comes out. You can't get it away. So you have to have a cannon that's in range of this, this square here. And then you generally want one in the mineral line as well. So here's one to help guard the minerals. This one, maybe because it's up against the wall, he feels like this is enough. But I, I, maybe this, he just can't really fit one in here without destroying his mining. But I'm a little bit nervous about this area. <clears throat> Don't know if Crossy will find that though, of course, right? He's not a map hacker. He doesn't know for sure. All right, let's see. Yeah, see? That's why you need that uh, secondary cannon up there. Really, really painful. Man. Has four Scourge in here, too, so you got to be careful about, about, you know, actually diving in. Great micro there from Cross. He's already killed a lot of probes. That trap probe was probably grouped with the Corsair, so that's a little bit sad. Has to trap another one. Very bad situation. <clears throat> and already 11 hydras in the way. Oh, shit! DT's over here. Okay. Well, they actually get a little bit of counter damage. All right. So uh, definitely something that helps helps bow out a little bit. E evens it up a bit. You know, me talking about... Uh, talking about, like, broad strategy and then missing harassment. There is there is no better combo than that. That's I don't know if I'll ever get better. Anyways, uh, a lot of gateways on the way. Looks like Boa wants to get into that heavy macro. Good thing those DTs were out there doing some damage, man. That's really really important. Uh, now the Hydra range coming up. Overlord speed, plus one ranged attack as well. He is on the six hatchery. Mutas look like they want to come back for a little bit more harassment. Still no cannon here. He's going to get a few probes. Five Corsairs, though. He will be able to clean that pretty quickly. All right. Kills off a few. Starts to run from those Corsairs. You don't want to overchase the Corsairs. You never know if he's set his trap with Scourge. In this case, of course, we can see he did it, but you don't know. And if you're always chasing, people will just start setting those traps against you. It sometimes isn't worth your time to, to do such a thing. You know, he's he's buying all these other things, teching up and all that. Another evolution chamber coming up. Lurker upgrade as well. Don't forget, this is match point for Crossy. So if Bo is able to win here, we're going to go to a game four. If not, Crossy goes to the finals against Gypsy. That's kind of interesting. Where is it? Okay. Yeah, he never actually went for plus one. And yeah, we never saw any uh, carapace upgrade or attack upgrade for the uh, mutas. You never get attack, but kind of interesting. They both skipped that. I forgot to check that a little bit earlier. All right. So it's two gates there and then four, six, seven, eight plus robo. So Boa basically getting everything online right now. Lots of high Templars has an Archon in there, which is kind of nice. Has his five Corsairs, so the Mutas are going to have a hard time uh, harassing his army. Not not harassing his main, though. Again, you really do need a cannon up there. If, they're, if you see that second gas, you need a cannon blocking here, and you need cannons in your mineral lines. Or, you know, in some place to guard the patches, right? Crossy has found so much damage up there at this point. It's pretty absurd. He's killed, like, more than ten workers. All right, good split there from Crossy. Is uh, Boa trying to chase everything down? He is going to be able to kill some of these mutas, I think. Ooh, are they just going to fly out of range? Oh, turns around. Ah! <laughs> Takes a lot of clicks to try to do moving shot with Corsairs, so uh, Crossy turning around there. I guess he will escape with some of the mutas at least. Double Evo's going for plus two, plus one on these Hydralisks. Fourth base goes up for Crossy. Tons of drones over here. He's up in workers right now. Boa's going to have to hit an attack. No question about that. Observatory on the way. All 
All right, time to gather outside here. Now, I want to talk a little bit about... Okay, well, Crossy's doing it right now. This high ground, if you can set up Lurker's spread here and a spread of Hydras to support them, this becomes very hard to break, right? Whereas if Protoss is roaming up here, it's kind of hard for Zerg to attack into it. So what you want to do is you want to spread the Lurkers at least a Psy Storm apart. You can see those two are a little bit close, so he splits it up. These two are actually both Psy Stormable at the same time. Maybe he'll move one of those, maybe he won't. Uh, but he's got a pretty good setup overall. M morphing a lot more. Yeah, he moves that one as well. So, yeah, Crossy just making sure that Storms aren't going to be super, super effective against his Lurkers. Has these Hydras up here. This is a very tough area to break, but Boa does not have to go up to break it right now. Right? There's other alternate ways to play. Now, he comes down, picks off a high tumbler. That's really nice. Boa decides to take his third Nexus, but that is actually off-center, I think. There's That is absolutely off-center. So that was a bit of a mistake. Throws that down maybe a little bit too quickly. Ouch. That's, that's pretty painful. Now, Boa is trying to break up. If he can kill off all these Lurkers and take control of this area, sometimes it starts to go into Protoss' favor. Right? Like, when they when Zerg goes for a big Lurker container and you kill all the Lurkers, that was their army. Right? It's not like they have a secondary Lurker defense at home. No. All their Lurkers are up there. So, suddenly, they don't have that high-tech unit that they spent a ton of gas on. Right? And Boa is actually going to break out of here really, really beautifully. Let's see what he has left over. So, it's mostly Dragoons here with 1-1. One, one. He has two High Templars, no Storm yet, and two Storms. So, he's about to have three Storms. Lots of Zealots coming out. I like it. I feel like he may want to just poke over here and see what, what's what, right? Like, you definitely don't want to just sit still. Come out here, see if you can get some engages. Now, he's going to come up. You don't want to do, like, a full engage. If you can poke and hit good storms, it may open up into a full attack. But if he just full attacks up, I'm not sure if it's going to go well for him. So, he throws a storm down there. Continues the attack forwards. We'll see. Throw down a storm. Throw down a storm. Here come the lurkers. Ooh, that would be such a juicy storm right there. Uh, and the Hydra's going to come up, try to target down this High Templar. Ooh, it does get that final storm off, and it is a pretty good one as well. Corsairs come back to fight those mutas. And Boa going to run away. He gets away with most of his dragoons, so that's pretty good. Now he has his Nexus up. Right? I'm not crazy, right? This is supposed to go one hex over. Oof. Uh, anyways, you know, right now, uh, Crossy has, okay, no hive tech yet. There it is. He is getting the queen's nest, starting to set up some anti-drop. Has an okay amount of lurkers, has very good attack upgrades with that plus two. Lots more lurkers on the way, lots more lings on the way. Overlord's being spread out a little bit. Boa getting his plus two uh, armor. It is a little bit late, I would say. He had one one for quite some time. But you know what? He's got his third gas, and that's really important. You can really make a lot of high templars at this point. And don't forget, if he's holding this high ground, right? So let's zoom out a little bit. If he's holding this general high ground, right? It's very hard for Zerg to attack up. But Zerg can do things like turtle here, maybe turtle up here a little bit. It looks like right now he's just deciding to kind of hold the center. The question for Boa is, do you try to take a fourth down here or up here? Or are you actually going to try to march across the map and, and do some serious damage? Like actually break through some of these lurker... Well, I don't even know if you call this a contain. It kind of is a contain. It kind of is a defense. Now, Boa going to move down the small ramp. Sees the overlords there. Decides to rotate back as uh, the hydras walk underneath one of his observers. All right, Boa, I don't think you can attack up this small ramp. Like, I don't mind coming down here, clearing some overlords. Yeah, and taking a fourth. <coughs> Excuse me. I like that. All right, you might need to leave a few units down here or maybe have units placed in such a way that you can come down to help quickly because it does feel like uh, we could see Crossy, like, very quickly attack in there. DT. I don't know if that's going to work. We'll see. Oh, there's actually not that many overlords. He might be able to wiggle his way up. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. 
All right, so that fourth base, that could change things, right? Four base against four base, that's all, like, the supply is really hard for, uh, high for Crossy right now. So, like, there's definitely good things going on for him. I do put him at an edge. But once you get that fourth gas, you really have, like, unlimited high Templars. It's kind of crazy the amount of storm you can put out. So, your cost efficiency is going to go through the roof. Now, more hatches are being made by Crossy's expanding over to that side of the map. Looks like a little group of units from Boa going to be broken off. Maybe he wants to go hatch hunting. No, it looks like he turns them back around. I like the... Uh, sorry I keep zooming out, but, like, that's the type of game this is, right? He's got defense here. He's mostly just roaming his high ground. Oh, that was that was a misclick of some sort. Not not what you want to do. Crossy's sending some links up. One thing to mention about Crossy and his unit comp, hard to control, right? He has to drag select. Like, you can't... You, there's not enough hotkeys in the world to hold all his units. Unless you're playing StarCraft 2, then it's just the F2 button. Uh, but yeah, he's got like a million lings. He's got a ton of lurkers that are burrowed. He's making it very hard for Boa to attack. So I almost feel like Boa just shouldn't on attack here. Poking with storms and back up. Just storm for days. Well, Ling's coming up and trying to get some good picks. They do have that Adrenal upgrade, so pretty strong. In the meantime, Boa has two Robos. He is working on shuttle speed, getting some Reavers out as well. I love to see it. The Reaver's going to be a huge help to both his pushing and his defense. Now, starting to attack over to the side. All right, can Boa gain some momentum? This army is a little bit small, so he does have to be careful. As, as Crossy just drag select attack moves everything up, this army will be eliminated. He has more units coming out. Hitting some decent storms here. The Lurker's coming up for a flank as well. Oh my god, the Crackling's just destroying at the moment. Great storm. On to these Lurkers, though. <coughs> Excuse me. Crossy may have just too much and push this back. You gotta be careful not to lose all these High Templars, though. He just doesn't have a lot of gateway units at the moment. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> ah, no! <laughs> ah! Okay, okay, okay. Basically keeps them alive. Looks like a little attack coming in here now. Is getting some Reavers out. The Re oh, man. Picks off the High Templars. Really, really good move. The Reaver is going to help a lot as it builds up its Scarabs. Oh, it looks like it actually duds there. I think the Hydra it was targeting died. Okay. Good hit. Has to bring more units down, though. want to take a look at the production. Okay. It's not any more gates, unfortunately. Two, four, six, eight, nine gate, one stargate, two robo. Like the two robo I love. And I mean, well, at the end of the day, if, if you're spending your money, you're macroing correctly, <laughs> right? Uh, but it just, it doesn't feel like he's making a big enough army quickly enough. Whereas Crossy right now, he has these two additional bases. So he's on six base against four, which is still playable for Protoss. But I think that Boa has to turtle up. Like, I don't think moving out right now is going to do anything. Well, he is picking off a few units, so it feels like he's getting good feedback for this. But I think that Crossy just comes in around the other side and this dies. Right? If you get units here, all this dies. You can't retreat. And that's what I'm worried about for Boa. Like, he needs... It's good to come out and kill some units, but if you lose this army, it wasn't good. Because you have to build up to a critical mass that can actually fight. This is, a, this is like a poking army. This is not an army that's going to win you the game. It's an army that you go up and poke and you, you know, you're getting value with. But if you, if you lose it, it's like it's just going to take that much longer to get a real army again. All right, Bo moving forward. Wants to kill off some more of these lurkers. More Psy Stormers coming down. Huge line of lurkers here. The Crackling's getting on top of absolutely everything. Look at that. Plague and Scarab damage almost look exactly the same. Never seen them stacked like that. Mm, the Lings are coming into fight now, and you can see how they surround. Yeah. Really needed to kind of sit back and make a bigger army. And look at the supply differential now. Twice as much supply here for Crossy. Not very much left over for Boa. He's going to try to storm and hold on. If he can cost efficiently remove this, I think he does have another chance to make an army, but we'll see. Crossy's sending a lot right now. Tons of good storms, tons of good scarab hits as well, but this is an overwhelming army, it looks like. Just the real Zerg Swarm here. GG is called, and that means 
that Crossy going to go to the finals here of the NA StarCraft Masters. He's going to be playing against uh, Gypsy. And, of course, we had uh, Hawk and Boa both getting top four, so they're going to win some nice prize money as well. So, yeah, Gypsy versus Crossy. I originally thought I was going to cast this all at once, but actually it's getting very late. Uh, so we are going to cast that finals uh, tomorrow, I think. Um, but, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. A big thanks to Mooney once again and all the players. And uh, the finals will be, again, Gypsy versus Crossy. Two very, very good players at that matchup, so I can't wait personally to see that.